Well, in these weird and uncertain times, who'd have thought that the Variety Hour podcast would be at the very forefront of technology? Well, we're not, but nonetheless, by using a cheap microphone attached to a power cord, plugged through a mixer, and uh, attached to a couple of more rubber bands, we're now coming to you live from an isolation hub. Just us and 108 NRL players. This is a remote version of the Variety Hour by, uh, by public demand. And this goes out to the at least seven or eight people who've uh, requested it. I'm Sergio Paradise, and that bloke several suburbs away is the great Titus O'Reilly. Well, the power of technology. The power of technology. Who, uh, who'd have thought that we'd be involved in the power <laughs> of technology? <laughs> we had to buy new equipment and everything. It's amazing. We, we, we did. And, and surprisingly enough, I mean, we're only 20 seconds in, but it seems to be working. <laughs> that's, that's to be seen. <laughs> How are you hanging so, in there? Oh yeah, how's your isolation going? You know, I mean, I mean, to be fair, most, both of us live fairly isolated existences at the best of times. I know, but, but it just—it's so weird, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. I haven't—I haven't laid eyes on anyone in you know what is it, four or five weeks now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost missing people, and uh, <laughs> almost. And, and I think everyone out there is learning that. Spending quality time with family is a poor substitute for football. Oh, exactly, exactly. That that argument was never going to fly. You get down to the supermarket much. That's about the only sort of you know, interaction I have with people. Like a, a little bit, yeah. That's about it, you know. And no one will talk to you or go near you, which is yeah. correct, you know. But it's it's just bizarre. I'm well, just... I, I, I'll tell you what, though. I, I was down there the other day and. Now, I, I suffer from a bit of uh, hay fever, right? And um, well, it's, it's either hay fever or just my sinuses paying me back for the 80s. I don't know. But <laughs> I, I was in the supermarket and I got a bit of a sneezing fit going. And the, the stares you get from strangers sneezing in the supermarket, it was unbelievable. I'm surprised, you, a, I'm surprised you weren't tasered. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction was like I've done a poo jogger run through the, <laughs> the meat section. <laughs> oh, oh, and I'm sort of saying to people, it's okay, it's just hay fever. Nobody's nobody going to believe you in that situation. No. But, but we've survived so far. Well, I mean, we, we we thought that the year couldn't get worse after Daniel Rioli and uh, Mia Favola yeah. broke up, and it hasn't. That, that still remains the... Um, <laughs> Yeah, nothing's going to top that as far as newsworthiness and and you know. Yeah, no, that really. Sort of. Whenever I whenever I feel a bit down about things, I think, well, I'm not Daniel Rioli or or Mia yeah. and what yeah. they're going through. But yeah. I tell you, uh, the moment this really hit home for me, yeah. what's going on is uh, when Judd Chella was announced it was cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> Every major sporting you know, the the British Open, the US Masters has been put off till November. Every every concert tour, you name it, everything's shut. Oh. But yeah, I think you're right. But as soon as once they put a black line through Judge Chella, you know, every, people at Melbourne just threw their arms in the air. Well, I knew nothing was sacred then and I, I my heart <laughs> went out to the glitter manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> well well the, the great shame is it probably doesn't affect you and I because were you invited to the last Judd Chella? Uh, not to my knowledge. <laughs> no, neither was I. Oh, I don't think we were going to get a Guernsey for this one either, but never mind. But, no. but young Rebecca, she, she still manages to find a way to the headlines, doesn't she? Well, I've got to say, like, the, you and I were texting about some of the things she's been in the media. I mean, the Herald Sun yeah. lives off Nadia Bartel and, and, and Beck Judd stories, and yeah. to the point where I think. I'm positive that the Herald Sun is actively trolling us now by <laughs> writing the most ridiculous stories about them. I mean, I really, yeah. I think they're very in on. One, I think people read about it, but yeah. so it gets clicks. But secondly, I think they totally know that you know it's ridiculous when they run some yeah. of the stories. What's been exactly. your fa- What's been your favourite? Well, apart from the fact of Judge Chella being um, cancelled, did did you read that? She discovered, you know, a, a very dodgy item in her house. I was stupid enough to see the headline here and click on it. Yeah. So I was falling for it. And uh, what it was, uh, when she was cleaning her house, or, or should I say, 
when her $1,700 Miele robot vacuum was cleaning her house, <laughs> it bumped into a strange object, right? Yeah. And she went and the strange object happened to be a toilet brush, which he reckoned had been left in the house by uh, tradies when they were doing their bathroom. And do you think they were shocked because the idea <laughs> – <laughs> the, the, the Judds don't go to the toilet, so the idea <laughs> there was a toilet brush was well, like a well, foreign object in their house. Well, well, the fact that I'm assuming Beck rang the Herald Sun to tell her this yeah. you know, groundbreaking story. I think story. she said it on her radio show, didn't she? Because she that tends to share. Yeah, she tends to share a lot of that. And, and it's true what you say about it was a Merle robot vacuum cleaner worth seven to, or $1,700, which, you know. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, she made that got bit get into the story. Do you think because she but mentioned then, it, she got it for free? Do you think that's why she's told this story? Oh, I reckon it might have something to do with it. I mean, the fact, the fact, I mean, we we, we talk about Beck Joe, but the fact that she's like an influencer and has a radio show, I mean, she's probably winning this battle. But have you heard the latest one from it? Just happened yesterday. The latest. Well, I've, of- no, I haven't heard the latest. I, I have to say, I did enjoy the toilet before we move on to toilet brush gate. Uh, yeah. Which you know was a huge story. Is uh, <laughs> I did love the fact she acted like you know we've got a toilet brush in the house like this foreign object. It was a bit like you stumbling across a piece of fruit in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Something that hasn't been in there for years and probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> I think we've had an intruder. <laughs> it's like finding a, a giant carpet python at the back of the pantry, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, so what's <laughs> but, her new one? What's her new one? The, the new one. This just came out yesterday. I saw. Right. Um, she took a photo, a, a put on her Instagram of her bedroom. Right. Right. Which is again something that you and I probably wouldn't do. But she took a photo and posted it to her Instagram, and then somebody's pointed it out to her breathlessly that there was another foreign object in this photo. She better delete it. She she made the photograph bigger and realised. That there was a pair of undies on the floor, on the carpet. Oh, no. Yeah. And she reckons, the closer you look at them, they may have already been worn and, in fact, you need to go into the $1,700 Miller washing machine in the, <laughs> the adjoining laundry. <laughs> <laughs> this was news. <laughs> this was news. She put a photo on Instagram of her bedroom with, with a pair of, of, of undies on the floor. Now, they didn't say whether they were hers or Chris's. For right. one of the kids, and but, and, you know, and you wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't know. But uh, and, uh, what's so, so you've seen Chris's outfit from Judge Chow? I don't think he wears any anyhow. But, <laughs> but what's amazing about that too is that someone's like examining her Instagram photos and blowing yeah. them up to look for this stuff, like people studying the, the, weird the stuff. people studying the John F. Kennedy assassination. <laughs> Video. <laughs> the, the Pruder film. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Beck Judd <Undies. laughs> I, I think Judd, uh, you know, Beck Judd Watch has to be added to our podcast as a segment because the other one yeah. I saw, which uh, I can't help myself now because they're just so, yeah. like, they're just so bizarre. She told this story on her radio show that we ended up in the paper, which is how I came across it, yeah. uh, which was um, – about how I think uh, don't quote me on this because I'm not sure how many children they have, but I take a few. Yeah, I don't know. Either. And uh, I imagine they're all called Jet or something. But um, <laughs> she said that one of her kids had to go to orientation at school. One of the younger yeah. ones, um, and she, it had she timed it poorly with something like some party. It might have even been Judd Cheller happening, and all the guests were arriving, and she realised she couldn't take them, so she sent them with the nanny. Oh, right. Good. <laughs> she told this story on air, and I'm just thinking, is this a story you want to tell? That you know, and she's like, well, I've been to the ones for the older ones, so you know, yeah. I know what's going to happen. It doesn't matter so much. <laughs> this kid's going to grow up with a complex. Well, you know, there's nothing. If there's nothing else about Big Judge. She she is one of the people, and she and she and she wants to get that across. Yeah, and and I, I, it's like everyone but an au pair. I mean, you are just one of the the common people. Well, she, yeah. the Viva the ever story was when she wrote one about what what a stressful time it is to move yeah. from your um, summer colours of your bed what yeah. to the winter colours, and that this was a stressful <laughs> time. I guess move, moving from sort of a mint to a more sort of 
autumnal brown or something. Do you, do you I don't find know. it stressful? Is, is it the colour or is it just going from a... I don't even change my sheets that regularly. Yeah. So I don't change them go, by the seasons even. Yeah, it goes from, <laughs> from one sheet to a doona. That, that, that's the seasonal adjustment that I find. <laughs> well, there's not and, much and of a be season. honest, it's not that stressful. It, it's probably the least <laughs> stressful thing that happens in my life actually. Oh, exactly. But now, that's, now, that's kept me pretty happy, the Judd Cheller stuff. That's, uh, oh, exactly. And, and and it's good, I think, that we're led with the, the Rebecca Judd story, given the state of the world at the moment. Well, yeah, you know, you've got you got to put the bigger story up front of Loon. Yeah. You don't <laughs> want to you know, bury the lead. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other one that I've enjoyed, I, I was worried. We might get to it in a little. Oh, actually, I'll bounce our order around a bit. Let's do this in a bit of a, a different order. Um, so follow, follow along yeah. with me. But um, sure. when the lockdown happened, I thought this is going to cause some real trouble for yeah. athletes at home board. You know, we're going to yeah. we're going to see some things. And then I was I was incredibly disappointed with both the NRL and the AFL that we weren't getting much because England sports stars had really come to the party. Where yeah, they've been pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah, Kyle Walker, within who plays for England as a defender, although apparently won't be selected again after this, and plays uh, in the EPL for Manchester City. When the lockdowns yeah. were first sort of brought in, he organised a sex party with a friend and two sex workers at his house, <laughs> which which was reported as apparently high. Hiring two prostitutes it does break social distancing laws. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> you, you and I tried to do this at Chateau Titus. <laughs> but you've <yeah, laughs> not get anybody to turn up. In fairness, we kept them. We we kept a broomstick between them and us the whole time to make sure it was safe. <laughs> they said it was the easiest five hundred dollars they've ever earned, <laughs> and, and we had to up that. <laughs> we made them listen to a podcast instead. <laughs> we paid them in a fair bit in the end. <laughs> they said, "If you're going to do weird Wouldn't stuff that like be the that, lamest, the lamest sex party you've ever been to. <laughs> I'd probably fall asleep or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do you want to Kyle walk it? So, what happened? Did he? Well, he got in a lot of trouble for this. You know, he got yeah. fined and everything and all that sort of stuff. So naturally. Um, he then took – he then realised the error of his ways, which is all you can ask for in life is someone makes a mistake, they don't make yeah. the same mistake again. And so yeah. what he did was he finally decided, well, I'll stay home and won't do any of this. So instead he decided on a public stream that a, um, a Canadian rapper, not one I knew, and you know me, yeah. I know my rappers. Um, you do. He live streamed on one of his channels um, – a stripper he'd hired round at his house. <laughs> um, and anyway, all these other athletes um, jumped on to watch it. And, of course, they're all commenting on this live stream, which everyone can see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, Kyle Walker was one of them as well as um, some of his other English teammates like Marcus Rashford and Raheem Sterling. You were, see, well, we that's just naturally assume that, you know, Soccer players in the EPL would be smarter than your average AFL or NRL player. No. Nah, but it appears not. Not at all. <laughs> not. not at all. So, so Kyle Walker, has he been traded or just flung? Well, it, no, he's still at Manchester. Manchester City, I think, from my knowledge. Um, I haven't yeah. seen anything about him being moved on, but I did see um, the coach of England saying he'll never select him again. So he's in Fair trouble enough. there. <laughs> so they've got onto this stream and everyone can see them and they're just making – Comments. And it, and then I read this. Uh, this stream went for five hours. <laughs> now talk about five hours of what? I mean, they must be five hours of strippers. Yeah. <laughs> while you're at home watching it online, it just <laughs> I mean, make the no sticking, sense. Sticking twenty dollars notes down your own underpants. <laughs> What's wrong with just getting cuddling up with a good book? <laughs> but then on top of that. Uh, re- researching up a bit of Kyle Walker, I, whenever someone does something like this, I let it, like to read up on them a little bit. And in one of yeah. the articles, it um, you know, often it um, will have a little just tagline that explains a bit about them or something at the end of the article. Yeah. 
My favourite one, I'll read the line out to you. This is, is our yeah. dear Kyle. It said, The dad of three split from long-term girlfriend Annie Kilner earlier this year after we after we revealed, this was the newspaper, he got modelled model Lauren Goodman pregnant. Does that, surpri- some Does that surprise you? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot in that sentence. <laughs> Long term girlfriend. Yeah. Dad of three. three yeah. Model. The, and, and the newspaper all revealed. In the, one. the newspaper yeah. revealed, which led to the split. <laughs> so in, in a in about fifteen words there, it's just that that's a whole biography. <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't learned at all. He's still doing all the stuff. So <laughs> anyway, now, so after that happened, I, I, I looked around and thought, well, we're not getting much out of, you know, the AFL. So first we had, yeah. we did have, there was an attempt to have a, a big controversy with Nat Fife. Uh, yeah, because he went surfing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, at first I thought, well, if he has it, he's silly. Because there's a lot of these laws, I have to say, that are, uh, uh, these lockdown laws, that are, they're over the top. Because yeah. you can't trust idiots. It's like a yeah. con- a convoy has to go as slow as the slowest vehicle. You know what yeah. I mean? It, we all have to go as slow as the biggest idiot. So hence the ban on a lot of things be- that really you could go, well, technically there's nothing wrong with doing that. Yeah. You could do it safely. But they can't trust anyone to do it safely. So if they say, oh, you can all go surfing, suddenly you have like yeah. 20 blokes all on the beach together all sitting yeah. there drinking so beers be and pretending. Yeah. 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 So, so – I get that some of the laws and, and what Fife was doing probably was had almost no, you know, it happened in April three, which is like it, I think it's like a millennium ago. Um, yeah, it it doesn't that, and he, ha, he was hitting the wave with um, the captain of the Kookaburras, the hockey side, and Margaret River, and it looked yeah. like he could get fined, but yeah, apparently he was the only bloke out there. Yeah, yeah apparently. He, Technically, he was cleared as that area that he was in. He wasn't outside of his area that he was allowed to be in because that's part of his work for his dad's trucking company. Because <laughs> he does a lot of work there. Is anything made out more than that fight <laughs> is involved with trucks? It's back to sort of like Scott Pendlebury's basketball yeah. background in terms of, yeah. you know, it's and like presented as a little-known fact. At Vizzy. Yeah. yeah, you know these sports stories that people tell you all the time, yeah. the media does, and every time they make out that it's we've never heard it before, like it's a new <laughs> fact. <laughs> and you go, yeah, yeah, we've heard it. We're very yeah, familiar yeah. with this. Heard that one, yeah. Uh, the other one that sort of happened overseas that was pretty lame was Tom Brady, who's obviously the Patriots' former mm. quarterback who's been uh, – Trade uh, move to Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's forty two yeah. years old, Brady. Um, yeah, and he's well, two two year deal, fifty million bucks guaranteed. Yeah, and and yeah. and Gronkowski, who played the tight end, who played with him at New England, is yeah. going there too. So, um, yeah, the Tampa Bay Patriots next year. But apparently, yeah. he was spotted training in a park by himself. But it was technically it's close. To the, yeah, yeah, so it was technically close to the public. So he got told off for that. Uh, he had to leave, so you know, but pretty lame. So I was a bit disappointed, but then of course in stepped Lockie Neal, a uh, Lockie Hunter, Lockie um, Hunter, yeah, Lockie Hunter of the Bulldogs, who sounded like he had a bit of a night. <laughs> when I heard this, when, when his his name started trending last week, I thought, well, what's going on here? And uh, then I read about it, and it's Lockie Hunter, or as he's now known, Dodgem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Four I, I just want to know how you can crash into four cars and not. I reckon if I if I hit two, I might stop. pull over. And <laughs> I might stop. I mean, <laughs> That's, this is an ideal. Well, you know? What was amazing is, and there's been a lot of background on this. I love how the Bulldogs have take have taken about a week saying that yeah. they had to establish the timeline and the facts, which made me instantly <laughs> think if it's taking that long, they don't believe the story they're being presented with. Yeah, um, or the, yeah, they're, they're trying to trying to spin it one way and it's going the other way. You know? Yeah, like you don't if if it all all the basic details seem pretty obvious early on, but it was obvious that the bulldogs weren't too, you know, sure that that was true. And I know Eddie got burnt years ago. Um, yeah, by he sure 
and was it Didac? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, Didac, I think. Yeah. yeah, for telling lies to him, he went out and defended them, and then it came out all being true. So I think they were a bit. Thing, but he, it sounded like he he had an argument with his girlfriend, got in the car angry. Yeah. Apparently, had been drinking a bit by this point. Drove, cleaned up Ford cars. Yeah. One of them belonged to the family of uh, Bailey Smith, his teammate's girlfriend, yeah. where Bailey Smith was staying at the time. So he's cleaned up four cars and Bailey Smith went down and going, what are you doing? Now, they, <laughs> they seem to believe that he was, that he had, that Bailey Smith was there completely coincidentally. They, they have, yeah. they I think they, they basically doubted that at first, the Bulldogs, but now say that they're, completely satisfied that that is actually they accepted true. that he was staying at his girlfriend's parents place yeah, yeah. Bailey then drives so, drives him off to another t- like they apparently the, did, he didn't do a complete runner he left his details and his car so yeah. it didn't sound like he was trying to you know drive off and act like he wasn't there well in my experience if you crash into four cars yours is possibly not drivable anyway by that stage yeah that's right um, and so Bailey Smith what's he done he's driven into Billy Gowers' place in South Yarra. Yeah. And, and that's when they And got, hasn't, told the, hasn't told the club, so he's gotten a bit of trouble. And then yeah. they've apparently kept drinking. Now, there was yeah. a bit of a thing here saying this, like, oh, because he then, the police caught, caught up with him there and he had a blood alcohol reading of 0.123, which is a good effort. Yeah, um, yeah that, that, that's a fair night out. Yeah, not if you're driving, but it's a, it's a good <laughs> effort just drinking-wise. And so they apparently... There was a bit of a hint that they were going to say, well, a lot of that blood alcohol level is actually from him drinking after the accident, not before. After the accident. Which is, they haven't gone with that. He's apparently accepted that he's going to be charged with it, not going to contest it. But I did love that idea of trying to run that argument because if that was true, every time anyone had an accident while drunk, the best thing you could yeah. do was be quickly go somewhere and drink a lot more alcohol. If and that get worked, on it. Yeah, if that worked as an excuse, that's what you do. It's like that TV show, you know, RBT, Random Breath Test. Yeah. Whenever, like, he, you know, he comes on, he blows in the thing, and then he has to get out of the car and he can barely stand up. Yeah. And he always says to the cop, guarantees, oh, I had a couple of beers. <laughs> it's always a couple of beers. And if it's a female driver, I had two two glasses of wine. Yeah. It's... Now, now each, each glass was obviously the size of a bucket. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the, the whole, you know, I crashed my car into four other cars and then I got drunk. Yeah, it's well, that, be a tough that's deal. what makes <laughs> no sense to me, right? You, yeah. you crash into four cars. Yeah. Do you keep drinking? Yeah. You know the cops are going to catch up with you, don't you? Or at least yeah. one of the other guys who were supposedly sober at first would have said, do you think this is a great idea? And on top of it, he shouldn't have been going to his teammate's house anyway. Yeah. Um, and they've all breached the various uh, COVID stay-at-home laws. So it's, he's, he's really done it. So I was very proud of him doing that. What a job yeah. he's done to give us something. But, God, and, he's and lucky he didn't and kill you, someone. Yeah, but, but as you say, he, he is – there's a lesson to be learned in every mistake, and that is, and as you just pointed out, that if you do crash into four strange cars, then drink heavily. <laughs> then drink heavily. <laughs> but also he That's crashed cool. into Mercs and all these Audis and all this because it was yeah. in South Yarra, I think. Which, no, Albert uh, Park. Albert Park. Well, there are suburbs. Yeah. He, he, I bet you wish he'd done that in Cranbourne. Yeah. <laughs> In Cranbourne, they wouldn't have even noticed that the bumper bar had been knocked off. <laughs> okay, was, this, was this side of the car missing last week? Or, oh, I can't remember, mate. Probably. Yeah, I can't remember. It's, it's been stuck for a while. You know? It's a bit of a difference cleaning up a Ford Focus. <laughs> you know, and yeah, a Barina. It's up on, it's up on brick. You know? <laughs> so, he's, so his insurance won't cover him. So this is going to cost him a fair no. whack. Well, they well, said yesterday that they estimate about 150 grand. Jeez. Now, now I know footballers get paid handsomely. Yes. Um, but he's uh, he's been losing a fair whack of his um, salary this year anyway. Yeah. And I don't care who you are. Nobody likes to write a check for 150 grand without getting something in return. Well, then so, he's uh, also been fined um, 
five hundred thousand. Uh, f- sorry, five thousand dollars for drink driving by the Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, which doesn't seem that high, but I guess he's got all the other costs that are going to come with this. And then a further, I think that's the maximum, isn't it? That yeah, the clubs yeah. Are allowed I think to find the players. It's well, he's, the players well, he's apparently rules. fined another fifteen thousand, but they're suspended for the remainder of his contract till twenty twenty four. So he's got time to, if he doesn't yeah. do anything else stupid, he's he doesn't have to do that. Yeah. I did love. There was a few people here. Um, I know Tom Bram and Channel Seven did it, but the one I actually noticed was uh, Peter Gordon saying this is. Um, as president, you know, oh, it's reflective yeah. of the pressure we're all under at the moment. <laughs> have you crashed? I know, as we say, we we're complaining about you know, having to, to be in isolation, but have you gone out and crashed four, into four cars? No, I mean, due to the pressure, this is what's amazing. Like the, the idea that he's under any more pressure than anyone else at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we're all under pressure. I mean, he's at least getting paid something at the moment, like. Well, there's a lot of getting job, but he's still getting paid handsomely. Yeah, I mean, then there's a lot of us. Thousands there. of people getting zip. Yeah, well, I'm getting zip. So you know, yeah. so but I'm not getting drunk and getting in the car. So you know, I mean, it's having said that. Now, now we're pointing out that we are both getting zip. I might get drunk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might well, well you it. should once you have drive over here. <laughs> So we had that, and then of course on the back of that, which that was a fair effort. And I, you know, we were waiting for yeah. the, the other shoe to drop, and uh, you know, someone someone to do something stupid. So that was a fair entry by Lockie Hunter. Then Tyson yeah. Stengel, who plays for Adelaide, hasn't played that many yeah. games. He pretty much, I think, the same day, or maybe it was a few days later. He came out, and no, it, was, it was a few days earlier. But Adelaide, days ago, oh, that's right, it hadn't really come they out. They covered up that they hadn't told anyone yet. He he got caught drinking with a blood alcohol test of 0.125. So he was higher yeah, which than... Is, which is about about the same as... as um, Lockie, just a Hunter. couple of percentage. It was yeah. a little bit above, but not much. And um, now he was also... He didn't manage to crash into anyone, which, no. uh, you know, is, is to his credit, I guess, but he was driving an unregistered vehicle. <laughs> And that's never going to work in your favour. <laughs> so he wouldn't have been covered for anything if he did someone. Um, yeah. So so they've really come to town. Um, it's just there'd be a lot more if they could. There'd be a lot more stupid things if they could go to to pubs, wouldn't they? Yeah. A bit if, limited. If, if, I, I think the 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 isolation thing um, has reduced the number of idiotic things. Well, I, I did so down here. Um, down my wife the woods the other day. I did see the King brothers, Max and Ben, having a kick yeah. uh, together, but you know, maintaining a good forty or fifty meters in between. And I also did see Angus and Andrew Brayshaw doing a similar thing at a different oval. Right. So, a lot of I hope they were about one point five meters away because any further than that, and Angus would probably struggle to hit a target. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, funnily enough, Andrew was leading. I saw Andrew was leading to him and Angus just kept bombing it up in the air to him, just hoping he would land on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing about this, we were mentioning that you kind of have to have extreme laws in place because not everyone will be sensible. So even yeah. even things that, you know, we really should be able to do but, you know, you loosen it a bit and, and people take yeah. advantage of it, which is why some of the things like the banning of going to St Kilda Beach or Bondi Beach were put in place because yeah, it, it wasn't like, yes, if you go out surfing by yourself or swimming, you're probably going to be all right. But it's if they say the beach is open, you don't get that. You get the idiots coming out. Yeah. But yeah, one thing I... 10,000 of them. Well, and the one thing that's been controversial is that the golf at the moment in, yeah. in Victoria is banned. And Sam Newman has been on an absolute crusade against this. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Sam's suffering from a disease way worse than COVID-19 and that's relevancy deprivation syndrome. Yeah. As I was about to say, in Sam's defence, he has nothing else to do but play golf <laughs> <laughs> and probably will ne- never will. <laughs> he's, been, he's been going off tap and I kind of feel like a lot of people have gone, 
Look, I can see why golf could easily come back and be played if yeah. they, if clubs enforce, you know, tee off times to separate yeah. groups, minimise two everyone. at a time or one at a time even, and have their own cart. And yeah, you, you know, you have all these. All them, it? You it's could quite do feasible, it. But. It is feasible, but the more Sam's gone on about it, the more people I reckon he's pushing into the yeah, keep it banned. I I agree with that. I I saw Dan Andrews the other night. Now. Most people know Dan Andrews is a very keen golfer himself. Yeah, um, he, he's probably got a bit too much on his plate at the moment to be to be hitting the, hitting the links anyway. Yeah, but you you just see a, a, a wry smile go across his face, and he, and him thinking you can see it ticking over in his head. He's thinking, look, I, I, I hear all the arguments as to why golf should come back. Yeah, but the more Sam goes on about it, the longer I'm going to keep saying no yeah. for no other reason. <laughs> just to not <laughs> hand Sam a win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd like to say when all restrictions are lifted, just keep the ban on golf for a bit longer. <laughs> or just ban <laughs> Sam. <There> are... <laughs> Sam's club should be closed. Everyone but there. Sam Newman can go back to golf. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, also this I'll... thing of is his attitude in the like amongst people like himself, which is yeah. The rules shouldn't apply to me in the same way. Like he kind of covers yeah. it in the, oh, I'm trying to do this for all golfers. But really it's like do you, you know, how many things would all of us like to be doing? I mean, whether it's golf or g- going to the pub or, you know, pl- and, going to the f- it's, everything. It's, it's, like. not, it's not just sport and stuff here. Um, it just People can generally be idiots no matter where you are. I read something this morning that the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, he, he, he launched just a couple of days ago because, you know, as we all know, New York's been a hard hit joining the whole of the state. He launched a, um, I don't know whether it's a Twitter feed or, or a Facebook page or something from him, the mayor of New York, explaining all the rules and what can be done and what you can't do and any information for the general populace. He launched that uh, online just the other day and they've had to close it down because it was just getting in, inundated with dick pics that people were posting. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I say. I mean, you're quite right when you know, people, people, the older I get, I'm, I'm just firmly convinced that people are idiots in, in general. Well, my view is that, like, the majority of people aren't idiots. Like, you look around, most people are doing the right thing, you know. They're staying yeah. at home. They're bored out of their brain. They'd love to do nothing else yeah. but go have a barbecue or do whatever, but we're doing it anyway because they're not idiots. Yeah. But you don't need many idiots. I, I've always said they're like <laughs> z- like zombies. Idiots are like zombies. If one on yeah. their own you can manage, but when they get in groups, <laughs> that's when they're dangerous. And you're seeing that in America with all these people protesting at the moment. Exactly. It's, it's, it's like the, the fanatics at the tennis. Yeah, you don't need, you know, most... One of them you can throw them out. Yeah. But when there's 40 of them, you, you know. Yeah, people don't start to take them seriously. And, <laughs> you know, and this is, happens in politics, happens in sports. So, and this is why you've you got to have these often unfair or, you know, illogical some of these bands are on some things. But you've yeah. kind of got to get it. You, you have them to send the broader message to people, uh, yeah, to the idiots. Exactly. And it's like I said at the start, you know, you, unfortunately society is like a convoy and you have to go as slow as the – as the slowest vehicle, you know, it's like yeah. being at school, you know, like you, you kind of had to go as slow as the dumbest kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's sort of always been, uh, been the way. Yeah, um, exactly. The, yeah. the only difference is these days, unlike the dumbest kid at school, you can't beat them, bash them at the end of the class. But, um, yeah, you know. no, it's a, it's a dark time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now let's do a bit of a wrap, a, a, a run around the various sports uh, yeah. in Australia and how they're going at the moment. Now, the AFL, we should just mention briefly. I, I think the AFL have kind of they're in the strongest financial position of all the leagues. Um, yes, yeah, no doubt. One, they've been more popular. Uh, it's a very popular sport, but, you know, compared to the A League and rugby union, etc. The NRL is the only one that really challenges it, and arguably cricket. But they're they're financially in the best position. They've been pretty well run as a centralised administration, yep. so they've they haven't just given all the money to the clubs to spend. You could you would I would make strong arguments the AFL and their clubs have overspent 
over the last yeah. 20 years of or 30 years of boom time um, and things like AFLX, which we mocked. But even at the time I was saying it's just money could be spent better than on these things. These are wastes of money. Yeah. Um, but the, and, as you say, yeah, you're right. I mean, generally speaking, they've been the best run. The yeah. um, code. And by buying... Eddie Head Stadium was a master stroke that turned out now because yeah, they've got an asset that collateral and they've got a, a big asset, you know. So they, they've been in the best thing. They've also kind of, I think, been smart in – look, I know a lot of people will say about Rugby League, well, they've named their date. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got to start planning to get back. All, all those things I agree with. I just think it's sort of – Sending the wrong, even if they were quietly preparing for a May twenty eighth, which might still happen, you know, like the the, yeah. the cases are dropping dramatically, and that's great. But it just, I thought, sent a wrong message. The AFL, I reckon, have been smarter in just not putting a date, not saying too no. much, and just sitting right. back and seeing how it all plays out, letting the yeah. NRL take all the heat for seeing. And, and yeah, and the AFL, and they're keeping their powder dry for that reason, and that's probably right. working through all the. You know the different scenarios and what needs to be done to get get it up and running, and they won't announce a date or do anything until they're one hundred percent convinced that they're good to go. Yeah, that's right. Now, just on the NRL, what do you, what do you think of the whole idea of of having a hub where the entire NRL stays together and lives together and plays all the games there? There's nothing. How do you reckon that's going to go? Well, the AFL are talking about hubs too, so I think the idea makes yeah. sense. But you know, in the in the way, the only way they're going to get back this year, any sport, I think, is without crowds and a yeah. limitation or being able to track where all their players and everyone is, so that they can create a bit of a bubble that they can yeah. stop things. So that that in itself makes sense. I do love the idea of NRL Island that they keep floating. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> That's a reality. That's a real. Oh, I would be in on that. Oh, yeah. in, and it's not just, just the an, game. An, like... an island with 200 in, um, rugby league players yeah. on it. Would you ha- you'd have to move high the, school. You'd have to yeah. move the women off, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. could you? Could you imagine? And the, and the, and like the, the dogs. Island. And the dogs as well. <laughs> yeah. any, any living thing has to be moved off the island basically before. <laughs> Before he happens. even host Osher Gunsberg would have to watch himself. <laughs> <laughs> but it but it would be terrific. I could really sign on at NRL Island. I am but it was a bunch of NRL fans that get stuck into me because I was sort of saying like every expert on this thing says on on viruses and um yeah. says we got no way of knowing how long or when this how this will play out. This was a few weeks ago and the NRL go, We're back May twenty eighth, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> like so, so if you NRL, we'll be right, yeah. so if you NRL fans got stuck into me and said, "Oh, you just don't want it to come back," and I'm like, "You have no idea how much I want rugby league Ireland yeah. NRL Ireland to get off the ground. Like uh, oh. it's all I want in life, more than you could know." Um, and you can imagine the frustration of the players it will boil over into ultra violence as soon as the game starts. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be returned to the, the, the great era of rugby league. Oh, it's going to be a nightmare, but. Off the field, they're having all sorts of trouble. Uh, Todd uh, Greenberg has um, come, uh, uh, been pushed really, uh, been sacked yeah, basically. Yeah, he's only sword uh, a couple of days ago. A couple yeah. of days ago. He's been CEO for four years. The thing that's damning about, there's a few things that people will say he did well, um, launching yeah. the Women's League, et cetera. But overall you have to say like the damning thing about him is well, one, rugby rugby league had set up uh, a while ago, partly for Todd Greenberg, um, some of this stuff he inherited. Um, they'd set up a fund, a rainy day fund, and then about yeah. three years later they let the clubs raid it and just have it yeah. all, which they just spent on sacking coaches and executive appointments and all this sort of stuff. So they basically, you know, know. Yeah. spent their rainy day fund when it wasn't raining. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they've been accused by, you know, actual people who are, you know, closely involved that they've just blown enormous amounts of money on administration and salaries to people. And I think, you know, even a, a player like pension funds, they've been dipping into that and borrowing money off 
Channel 9 and Fox, Foxtel. Well, it is to, amazing. To hand out the clubs. This figure, this is absolutely amazing to me. Their head office, and I say this knowing full well the yeah. AFL's head office has been bloated for a long time, as has a lot of the clubs. But the NRL, um, considering yeah. that they didn't have an asset or the, the financial security that the AFL has, <coughs> ha, does have, um, yeah. they were spending almost half a million dollars a day just to run their yeah. operations. And Greenberg was on a 1.2 million base wage, which yeah. also has bonuses. And executives yeah. were getting $6 million in the last financial year, which is um, extraordinary for a, an organisation that is so quick to be, or, you know, close to bankruptcy <coughs> now. Yeah, but, but an organisation that's, that's simply there to, to administer a sporting competition, basically. How do you spend half a million bucks a day, you know? I know. It's a, it's a without, without having, you know, 150,000 employees or something on the book. It's, I, it, I it's a work huge it amount. It's a huge amount. Yeah. It, it, the writing was on the wall for Greenberg where uh, basically uh, uh, Peter uh, Landis was um, uh, – the chairman had come yeah. out quite publicly for quite yeah. some time. In fact, negotiating the, t- the they're trying to renegotiate the TV rights deal at the moment. Um, yeah. And Greenberg had just been completely just kicked out of those discussions. Nine had refused yeah. to even talk to him. Um, so they were. Yeah, Blandy's yeah, just taken over there. Yeah, well, you, you had a um, a TV rights negotiation happening between the chairman and. Uh, the uh, Channel Nine and Fox Sports, and not having the CEO involved at all, but they look like yeah. they're going to put potentially have a new deal, which will see less money come in, but they get the money more now, which is to yeah. the end of twenty twenty five. So they need it now. Um, yeah. So, so the other thing I found interesting is one of the reasons um, rugby league's in this trouble is the clubs have had way too much power. You've had no centralised control, uh, like yeah. the AFL have had since sort of eighty two, I think it was. So they're now looking as part of this deal that the clubs are going to be empowered and it's going to be a more decentralised governance model like the EPL for rugby yep. league. I think that's – that just – it's sort of like let's double down on the things that have got us into this trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you just – you wonder how – rugby league seems to be uh, one of these sports that um, – they don't learn from their mistakes. Now, if they get get up and running again, whether it's May twenty eight or whether they don't at all, if at some point down the track everything is good to go and the crowds come back and the and the games are getting played, they'll stuff things up again somehow. They won't learn from their mistakes. No, nah. no. Nah. I mean, the AFL hopefully will trim a bit of fat and, and save some money, and and, uh, and and I think they're already talking about, you know reworking the whole AFL system. Well, everything Again. will be. I mean, and, and yeah. this isn't to say the AFL are not necessarily – they're making out a bit like they're the, the great example of good corporate governance. You could make a strong argument yeah. that they haven't done a very good job either. They, they should have been putting yeah. a lot more money aside and running a lot tighter and leadership for a very long time yeah. and didn't. And so you could you criticise them then. It's just compared to other sports – um, it's a bit like yeah. Churchill's quote on democracy. I always say, you know, the AFL is the worst sporting administration in the country, except for the rest. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. it's more the yeah. now even worse than NRL. Though you'd have to say rugby union is in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> I mean, they they had a we're, TV. We've been documenting this for, for. I mean, the Israel Folau thing seems like a lifetime ago. You know? Oh, and he's going to be and the only break. He's in danger of not getting his payout. Yeah, for whatever many millions it was, three million or whatever, because um, because if, if rugby money. union, if the AAU go or rugby Australia, as it's now called, goes bankrupt, but um, there's there's been a letter written uh, by some of former Wallaby stars, some of the biggest stars in the game, calling for complete change at the top of rugby yeah. Australia. Um, and I think there's like ten or eleven. Captains of the Wallabies. Well, George I mean, Gregan, Nick Far Jones, yeah. George Smith, Sterling Mortlock, which is the greatest name in Australian sports, Sterling yeah. Mortlock. Yeah. Um, Michael Liner, Simon uh, Poverden, Phil Kern, Stephen Moore, Jason Little, 
Rod McCall and Nathan Sharp. If you know, if you don't know about rugby union, you'd know almost all those names. But they're all huge. But some of the people that aren't on it are interesting. Um, uh, Tim Horan's not didn't sign it, and John yeah. Eels. Uh, John Eels not been, oh, there, but he's been involved yeah. in some of the boards and stuff. I'm not sure if he's still yeah. on the board of Rugby Australia, but he was. So they haven't, but they're talking for it to be uh, to basically. But that's be, a pretty powerful block of, of former captains that, yeah. that want change, and and most of, nearly every one of those guys uh, is a very successful, intelligent businessman in their own right. Most of them are lawyers and stockbrokers and these sort of guys. Well, it's amazing so, how much. Um, it's amazing how much – I mean, Rugby Union, they'll write case studies of how not to run things on Rugby Union. The fact they've negotiated their way, turning down deals, to basically yeah. at the moment have no future broadcasting revenue or rights. Um, exactly. Go, going forward, I mean, I think they've got some for this for the remainder of their deal, which has not got long to run on it. But basically Fox Sports don't want anything to do with them. None of the commercial TV stations are that interested. Um, Optus were looking like potentially signing with them until this all broke out and now they've yeah. withdrawn that offer. Um, you know, you might be watching Rugby Union on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that might be how you're getting it. <laughs> well, you might get Ray Leon Carpool doing a little dance. But oh. That might be it. I tell you, you know, what, the, the AFL coaches have seen Buckley and uh, Goodwin doing TikTok dances. Nothing yeah. makes me wish the footy was back <laughs> just to stop that sort of nonsense. Could you imagine Checker Hughes or Ron Barassi <laughs> or something, or Lee Matthews even, doing doing anything well, like this? Oh, Tommy Hapey would have been up for it. <laughs> just, to show his, just to show his <laughs> prowess, physical prowess. But can you imagine? I mean, sometimes I no. think, look, I know that, you know, there's this, and I think often it's probably very good, this push to redefine masculinity and move around from away from toxic masculinity. But sometimes <laughs> we go a bit too far, I reckon. <laughs> and look, Simon Goodwin, I would much rather he spend this isolation time working out a better way to transition from the uh, centre into the forward line. Yeah, and people not, would say, well, he's allowed to do other things. And I'd say, no, he's not. Not until you get it right. <laughs> No, exactly. That's your job. That is that your is job. job. <laughs> and that's and all not, we want you to do. I don't want to see anything around different. like one of the proclaimers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of like Lord of the Dance. You're not Michael Flatley. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a touch of the river dance about it. <laughs> oh. uh, the A League, we should just mention, they're in uh, such yeah. uh, dire straits that Foxtel, Fox Sports, um, have withheld their money. Um, because there aren't games, they've gone, well, we're not paying you what you owe for this quarter, I think it is. Um, yeah. yeah, their final quarterly payment uh, was due this week and Foxhill just said, no, nah, we're not paying it. Um, the A-League say or the Football Federation of Australia say there's little legal justification to do it. Um, yeah. But apparently lawyers are going to go and sort that out. But it sort of signals the death knell of the A-League being on uh, Fox Sports. I was about to say, even if you know the lawyers come in at, at thirty paces and, and nut out some kind of, of negotiation, you'd have to say that marriage is pretty much dead and buried. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean the, that, that, that's that's Kyle Walker kind of thing. <laughs> the A League, the A League say, well, you know, l- legally they don't have a leg to stand on, but uh, this is Fox Tell, but they would say that, wouldn't they? Yeah. Of course so they would. you know, um, see if they can get some money out of this, but um. So that's going to be interesting too. It does make me wonder, you know, can the – I mean, if you think about Australia, you know, you've got AFL, NRL, cricket, which has got its own yeah. troubles at the moment, um, yeah. rugby uh, rugby union, uh, uh, soccer slash football, depending on who you're talking to, and then yeah. basketball and the NBL. Yeah. So you've got all these sort of, you know, five or six main um, – and then you've got netball as well. So you've sort of got yeah. those – can Australia sustain, you know, I think we've been living in a bit of a fantasy land of having all these professional leagues in such a small market. And yep. it, this does make you wonder, you know, is, is rugby union just going to drop back to being sort of a, a semi-professional league? Yeah, almost an amateur 
sort of thing. Uh, yeah, because, where some of the top uh, players go off and play overseas, but you just because yeah. if there's not the the TV rights, I think I, I think if AFL and the NRL, which both rate very well, are going to be taking haircuts when it comes to TV rights, which was looking like well, this before the COVID nineteen break. Well, that's what I was about to say because the, the TV rights is sort of over the last couple of decades. So just every time there's a new deal to be signed, um, there's some ambit claim and it. they end up getting close to that. It's just been sort of a, a continual competition as to how far um, and how high those rights are going to cost. Yeah, and it was never going to go like that for it. It was already showing signs that that was not yeah, sustainable but those anymore. Days, those days are over. And, and, and the sports that, that can adjust to that, and this is where, as you say, the AFL probably have been the smartest to at least have a bit of a war chest and, and some assets. Um, so they will survive. But I, I, I think that days are very bleak for rugby union. And soccer, as much as great a sport as it is and as big a, a following as it has in Australia, they need to wake up themselves too or they're going to be found on the scrap heap. Well, their problem is just people being able to see it, you know, like their ratings yeah. and everything are are in real trouble. So you've got this thing and where, you know, the, the, are they going to be able to have big, you know, they're going to have to take a step back some of these to being more like state leagues or something again because the travel yeah. and everything, if if you don't have mm. TV rights underpinning at all, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, you know, and even the, the TV rights, funnily enough, come from the TV networks who, who bid for these. And the TV networks are bleeding themselves at the moment because so many advertisers are cancelling. Yeah, their, their TV advertising. So I mean, it's just a well. It reminds you know, me because going around in circles. Whenever you have a crisis, like in everything, whether it's a marriage or society, there's sort of these fault lines that run underneath it. And yeah, and when pressure's applied through a crisis, they suddenly start to split apart. You can live quite well with, with them. You can ignore them if everything's going really well, but the minute you're stressed or they're yep. stressed, they open up. And and that's what I think's happening with a lot of this. You know, you've got uh, the the TV stations were already under pressure because of the shift towards streaming and other things. Yeah. Um, this has now sped that up and it's sped up the problem for sports. It's sped up the problem with a whole bunch of things, you know, that – you know, yep. you, Warren Buffett used to say about, you know, recessions or d- depressions, final de- financial downturns, that it's like when the tide goes out, you can see who's not wearing any bathers. Yeah. <laughs> so That's you, kind of, true. you kind of get this idea of who's who's in real trouble and who's not. Um, yeah. You know, who's living beyond their means. And the sad thing is we've found out a lot of companies as well as the sporting administrations, they've been living beyond their means for years. And, yeah. and none of them look good. I mean, the AFL looks good by comparison, but none of them look good. I mean, the AFL should really have a lot more money set aside. I mean, yeah. you think about that money they spent on international rules and yeah. even the two oh, new exactly. expansion sides and everything. You yeah. know, like that was hundreds of millions of dollars on each Hundreds of, them. of millions of dollars. You know, if you just put that into a um, rainy day fund mm. back then and the interest, you yeah. know, it would be, probably yeah. wouldn't have to exactly. get a loan. Um, also, when the when the tide does go out, we want to see it at Rugby League Island, you know, real island. Not wearing bathers then. Now the last the last thing we're going to talk about is um, the Last Dance, the new Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls doco that dropped yeah. on Netflix um, on Monday. Um, and yeah, you, I, I watched it last night. Yeah, yeah I've watched it. What I, did I you? Felt like I was the only bloke in the state who hadn't watched it on Monday. Oh, I loved it. <clears throat> oh, I loved it. Um, and my two boys who are basketball freaks, I, I had to explain it, and they wanted to watch it too, but I had to explain to them that in his day, we all knew how good Michael Jordan was, and we, we'd get bits of it out here to see highlights here and there. Yeah. But there was no watching the NBA live every match like they've got today. There was no, no internet, none of this sort of stuff. And so it was just, it was fantastic just to watch all these legendary names going around on the court from back then. It was also, um, it's hard to get across just how, I know LeBron James is is yeah, huge and true. I know, you know, everyone gets into the, you got to compare them both and, and, and choose a side, but I think you can like both LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Um, yeah. But the, 
pop culture impact of Jordan yeah. as someone who's lived through both of those times. Yeah. Um, the excitement I always I, I still find watching Jordan highlights more exciting than watching LeBron James highlights. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not and, and that's not to diminish LeBron as a basketballer so much. No. In fact, there's a strong argument to make that he's pretty close to being as good as Jordan and some people would argue better. But uh, there was this the, the excitement of watching Jordan, the creativity, the everything, all those other bits that went along with it. Yeah. Um oh. were amazing. Yeah. And and the other thing about Jordan, I mean, you talk about his, his influence on, on culture and what have you back then. Remember, he was, he was like the first guy to do a, a massive uh, shoe deal with Nike and yeah. the creation of Air Jordan and stuff like that. I mean, that, that's become just a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. Well, that controlling it, your image and everything was... Yeah, like much, built on the back of him. You know, and so, he, you know, amazing in those rounds. I, I think... The one thing I thought was most interesting, if you know anyone, you know, and spoiler alert, if anyone hasn't uh, seen this yet, um, but there's the bit in I think it's his second season where he injures his foot and they bring him yeah. back very slowly, not letting him play a lot of games. But yeah. There's a chance to make the playoffs, and they keep yeah. saying he can play. I think seven minutes a half, fourteen minutes a game because they're yeah, worried about his right. foot getting re-injured. And, and yeah. to Jordan, this is just. Anathema because Jordan was so just all he cared about was winning and he would do anything to win and all he wanted to do yeah, was win. And the, the Bulls this year didn't think they're going to win the in, in his second season. Didn't think they're going to win the NBA championship, which they didn't. Yeah. But they thought better to rest Michael the whole season. Like he had to fight yeah. to get these fourteen minute games. Fourteen being allowed to just play fourteen minutes. And he used to yank. They told the coach. If you play many longer than that, we're going to fire you immediately. So yeah. that was because Jordan kept trying to say, I can play longer. They had sort of decided if we don't make the finals, we're going to get a far better draft pick, which helps us to keep building around Jordan. So they were basically not tanking, tanking, like, you know, and trying to finish bottom, but they yeah. were like, we're quite happy to miss the playoffs. Miss we'll the get, playoffs this year and we'll get a better draft pick. Yeah. yeah. And what was interesting in this doco is Jordan – was f- furious about this yeah. and basically willed them to get into the playoffs, which yeah. they did anyway, and then played a lot and had amazing series against Boston and all this sort of stuff, um, where I think he scored 63 points in one game and was just a phenomenon. But it was interesting to me watching it where he said a bit about he was furious at this idea of um, – being okay to lose to get better draft picks because he said it just creates this losing mentality that you just can't yeah. allow in and he just wouldn't let that happen. And it, no. it, we've said this before, like I kind of have a belief that tanking for draft picks and rebuilding is, yeah, and I liked it when I, like, and, you, you know, hearing Michael Jordan say it, it brings a lot more credibility than me saying it, but uh, you and I have long talked about how it's this false thing that creates – I think it does more damage long term to a culture than the benefit yeah. you get from the draft picks. It, it, it just breeds breeds that sort of losing mentality. That it's okay the, not to, it's, it's not like Jordan was like he basically said you know you, you, the sport is about winning and that's I mean you could say this about Jordan when you read about his personality and things he's done. He was yeah. he was this to a fault, you know, like he he could be a horrible teammate, a horrible person at times. Yeah. Um he just, but but you know, if you measure it on winning, it, it was everything he did, everything in life was geared towards winning. There was nothing else you had <coughs> you cared about doing. There was no like, let's try and win in two years. You know, and we've it, said this before: so many top level elite <coughs> sports people are that single minded. I mean, you look at Tiger Woods; he's exactly the same. Yeah, and he plays, uh, you know, that, a. Um, an individual sport rather than a team sport. Yeah, and this is why I just think like it's really interesting watching it and I hope anyone who's, you know, working at an AFL or NRL club or any yeah. like takes note of that. I think it's in the second episode. Um, yeah. Is this thing where I just think that mentality of we just will not accept that we're rebuilding or that we yeah. it's okay to lose like has a big impact on your future. Exactly. Um, and I, I thought that was really interesting. But it was great to watch. I mean, it's just a really great documentary. And Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. I urge everyone to watch. And just on that, there was just out today, 
Chris Anstey, who played you know, Australian basketball, he played a couple of years for the Dallas Mavericks yeah. over there. He's, he's just written a fantastic piece. I'm not sure where it was published. I read he put it, it on, on, fa- it's on Facebook. It's on, on Facebook. his Facebook page, yeah. Yeah. He shared it on About Twitter. About the time and he too. played against um, Jordan, yeah. Jordan and the Bulls. And it's a fantastically written story. Um, so, yeah, dig that one up as well. But, yeah, interesting times across the board, you have to say. The, the, one of the greatest things I've seen, I think it was, um, this just shows you Jordan's mentality of he had to win at all times. Yeah. Um, is I think it was Chris Paul had a basketball camp. You know, they often have these. Oh, you yeah. Know. So there's all these kids there in ranging from ages. They looked about, you know, from eight to about 12. And yeah. they looked about 200 kids and they're all on the basketball court. And he's invited Michael Jordan who by this point I think – you know, I think there's only a few, you know, in his 40s at the time. Yeah. Invited Mike, long, long retired. He invited Michael Jordan to come to his camp, which he did, you know, and the yeah. kids were all really excited. And then they're crowded on the court all around the three-point line, leaving the yeah. key empty and the key and inside three-point line empty. And there's video yeah. of this online. Sports Centre tweeted it out. And... Chris Paul bet Michael Jordan in front of all the kids that he couldn't hit, I think, five shots from around sort of the key or, where, or just within the three-point line. Um, and if you hit all five, he said, if you don't, if you miss one of these shots, you have to give all the kids here, like two, three hundred of them, Air Jordans. Yeah. So in front of all these kids, Michael Jordan <laughs> proceeds to hit all five shots. Of course. He, just, he doesn't like... <laughs> Doesn't miss one. He's just like, I'm not giving you. You've challenged nah. me. I'm not giving you free air, Jordans. <laughs> it would have been a great story. Jordan, he missed one, but he, he he stuck to his promise. And now all these kids have got their own. But, but air Jordan, Jordan being Jordan, yeah. when nah, it, like he could have. Told, it wouldn't have cost him anything. He would have just rang Nike and said, "Give it to them." Um, and yeah. it would have been great PR. But Jordan yeah, exactly. being Jordan, and you kind of watch these kids, and he hits the first, and they're like, "Oh." It's the second, it's the third, it's the fourth, and they're all going, oh. <laughs> and just, you can just, he's just breaking the hearts. They're already trying to decide which colour and which model. Yeah, they're yeah, you just on. break the hearts yeah. of these kids and then he hits the last one. He's like, all right, see you later, kids. <laughs> that's all, <laughs> that's how I'm you out get, of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> that's the lesson. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so just an amazing, amazing life. Uh, but yeah. Imagine being that, like, I'm just... I'm not willing to give these kids anything if it means me nah. lo- even if it me losing is <laughs> doesn't mean I'll lose. I'll I, lose. I could lose, and I'd be giving these kids the memory yeah. of their lifetime. Yeah, and instead, but I refuse to lose. I refuse to give it. <laughs> Go buy your own Air Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a ruthlessness, isn't it? The main. Oh no, the single mindedness. Uh, the champions. Well, anyway, well, on that note, we've uh, we've got one in the can, and we're glad we to be back. We're going to be back regularly now that we've got our setup. We will all now. Working. We've got this worked out. Yeah, and, um, and I'm, we're I sorry. We'll be back next week, and we'll get some questions up as well. Yeah, you know, we'll, we've actually had a little bit to talk about. So let's hope that um, someone does something silly. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, and and rarely just sports people let us down for too long. No. And we're, you know. we're due. We're certainly due. Yeah. And on that note, uh, we will see you next week. See you later.